I wanted to start with a little bit of background of Tech Field Day and our relationship here. This is our fifth event in the last three years. Um, and for us, this has been extremely foundational in how we get information out. And a personal story aside as well, I joined the company uh, in February of this year, and I was going through the interview process, and the first thing I did was went out to the site and went through all of the past field days to dig into the tech as deeply as I could. Because for us, this is the number one spot to get this information out there to the community. It's, it's really that independent source that we just love. And so today, the past field days have all been about storage, quite frankly. We've done storage field days, we've done tech field days, and it's because we've been really highlighting SpanFS, our web scale file system underneath the covers. But the product is so much more than that, and that's what we want to highlight today. We want to highlight that this is a built from the ground up cloud software product, a data platform. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna take you a little bit through on the agenda here, I'm gonna take you a little bit through the company and what we're doing and the problems we're trying to solve, but it's gonna be short, I promise you. And then from there, it's actually, this is extremely demo heavy. We, our only slides are to set up a demo, right? So this is about 75% demo, it is about 75% live demo, so. Fingers crossed. Um, it's going to be a, a, a great day. Um, and please, please, please interrupt us. Ask lots of questions along the way. We, we want your interaction as well. Um, and so what we're going to do is we've got the, the three sections here. The, the cloud adoption trends, app test and dev, and multi-cloud mobility is all about technical features. Right? We want to lay a foundation. We want to show you the features and the tech and then at the very end, we're going to bring it all together and show you kind of an end to end of how this all works. All right, so that's kind of the layout for today. Um, let me give you a, a quick picture of the company. Founded in 2013 by Mohit. Mohit, founder of Nutanix, and also lead on Google File System as well. So really good at building file systems, really good at building scale out file systems in particular. Huge growth, as, as Stephen mentioned, um, we, you know, we've been very successful with this product in a short amount of time to the point we have over 700 employees now. And great investors, Sequoia, Google Ventures, HP, Cisco, Morgan Stanley, and most importantly now recently, SoftBank. And for those of you that know SoftBank, um, their vision fund, they go <coughs> and their mission is to change industries. Right, and, and so they don't invest lightly as well. And the reason why is, is they, they chose us is this concept here of redefining secondary storage. Now, when I say that, a lot of people immediately go, what's that, right? And instead of going through slides and doing all that, here's what secondary storage is, is to me. There is the primary copy, that first copy in a data center. That is where you're running your data. Typically on a, uh, you know, let's HCI system or something like that today, that first copy, right? But you have to protect it. You have to create additional copies for test dev. You have to do, if you want to do analytics, you have to make another copy and stand it up somewhere else. And you start to get data fragmentation, if you will, copies two plus, right? Typical data center today has eight to 10 copies of data floating around. And sometimes they know where they are, sometimes they don't. Right, compliance reasons, data fragmentation, all of these other things that are going on, we're trying to solve that problem. We're trying to make sure everyone knows that copy two plus, where it is at all times. And why have we not been able to, as an industry, to solve that problem until now? Well, it's because all of these yeah, secondary use cases, if you will, those secondary copies, they kind of grow organically. They, they tend to, I'm gonna stand up some infrastructure, I'm gonna put a copy of the data, I'm gonna you know, do something here. And that's, that is data protection, it's test of, it's analytics, it's a little bit of everything and anything. But because of that, it's been extremely inefficient. Um, and it's been very slow because of that fragmentation and there's a lot of risk. The reason why I say risk is so I, I worked for a reseller for years and talked to a lot of customers, particularly in the southeastern United States. And 
what would happen with a lot of these secondary use cases? They weren't the primary. And so what would happen is I would, new hardware spend went towards the primary because you gotta keep the lights on and keep everything running as fast as you can. And then, oh, by the way, that, that you know, I need a backup server, I need a media server, I need something else. Whatever rolled off, you know, maintenance, the old server in the corner that, you know, has one power supply left in it, things like that, right? We had a lot of that going on, a lot of the data just hanging on, if you will. And we're trying to solve that problem as well. And because of all of the, the way this has grown, you got lots of islands, lots of silos. And various risks with all of them, I'm not going to go through these, but it, everyone kind of understands with each silo comes its own set of challenges. And how do you solve that, right? This is where the data platform comes into play. This idea of, you know, we, we've kind of always in the, probably in the back of our heads and never really realized it in this industry, there's always been this problem, but the problems always ex existed because the architecture, that's just the way it was for 20, 30 years now. Well, what if we start and think completely differently about that? What if we have a data platform that is for all of these use cases? And then what you start to do is ingest, if you will, these use cases into the data platform. You gotta get data into the data platform. So test, it, test and dev, data protection, file and object. We're loading it up, right? We're putting data in the data platform. Once you have all of that data where you want it, now you can start to do more with it, right? I don't have to have another copy and another set of infrastructure to do test dev. I can just make a copy instantly and do test dev a certain amount of time, throw it away. If I need it somewhere else, I can use it where it makes sense for the business, get rid of it when I'm done. Same with analytics as well. And so what we're doing here is we're just loading up the data platform. And that leads to <coughs> some nice other benefits as well. Now everything's in one place. Now everything is consolidated. Great. Um, my background as well is in scale-out systems. You get a, a bunch of really nice advantages with scale-out systems. API driven, first of all. Right, single control plane across the systems. And because if you're going to put hundreds to thousands of apps, thousands to millions of files and objects on a system, you don't want multiple consoles. You don't want, don't want multiple management platforms. In addition to that, if you're going to manage at scale, it has to be policy driven, right? It has to be automation friendly and built into the core of the product as well. And scale, scale's kind of a no-brainer these days. As we're starting to build these systems, this is just the natural evolution of our industry and the natural evolution of architectures as well. And once you set that, you can do even more with it in this idea of cohesity anywhere. What if, because most, most of us think of this today, right? On-prem nodes. For those that are familiar with Cohesity, this tends to be where folks think of us today, right? Because that's been our central core until now. Running on Cisco, running on HP, running on our own hard hardware. There's virtual edition running in vSphere as well for robo and edge cases. There is cloud edition for running out in any of the public clouds, virtual nodes running out there as well. And data continuum, all the data seamlessly moving back and forth through policies or through other tiering features or anything else like that. And those are some of the things we're going to show you today. We're going to show you how our customers are here and going to here. And it's all enabled through SpanFS. Um, Instead of, like I said earlier, instead of digging deep into SpanFS today, because we've done that in previous tech field days, I would encourage everyone who is interested in it, go back, take a look at some of the video archives. 
But for us, it is all about today building a story, showing the higher level features, and showing everyone the cloud capabilities around this, all with SpanFS, really kind of under the covers. And so to wrap this up of the data platform, you'll compare and contrast this against the very first slide, the silo slide, right? Vastly simplified, very efficient, much easier to operate, policy driven, the ability to scale infinitely. And so with that in mind, we'll flip to the cloud portion of today. Cloud today, keep this in the back of your mind. Um, some of the key differentiators that we believe are with our platform and customers are telling us that is the reason they're deciding to adopt us. Number one, global space efficiency. Everyone immediately, when we say space efficiency, everyone thinks storage efficiency, like how much are you storing? But in a cloud context, it's actually subtly different. Because, of course, yes, you've got storage efficiency. I'm, I'm doing global deduplication across all of the nodes, if you will, whether they're virtual or physical. Yes, that's one aspect of it. But public cloud, metered environments, network, right? Ingress, egress. You're being charged for that as well. So we are deduplicating before transit, for instance, right? So we're being efficient across the wire as well as efficient in how we store. Next, and you will see this as part of the demonstrations today, hybrid and multi-cloud mobility as well. We do not want you to go with the KCD data platform and then be locked into an environment, right? If you want to choose a different cloud provider, you can. If you want to store a certain amount of your data on-prem and when it makes sense, tier it out to public cloud for cost efficiencies or anything else, you can, right? So it is that ability to really do everything everywhere. Policy-driven, I've already talked about that one. And lastly, cloud and apps integration. Again, remember, built from the ground up. Cloud is not a bolt-on, cloud is not a gateway. Architecturally, fundamentally built into, down to the operating system, the SpanFS file system level. Built for cloud, built to integrate. We have the concept of adapters, right? If you want to natively protect Oracle, you can. If you want to natively protect Exchange, if you want to protect SQL Server, you can. If you want to integrate with some of the primary storage vendors, you can. So it is all about meeting our customers where they want to be, and you will see some of that as well.